So like I said before, my name is Travis Tidwell. Um, I am the lead developer at allplayers.com. If you guys don't know it, go check out the website. It's pretty awesome. Um, you can also find me on Twitter. Software Gnome is my uh, handle. I don't tweet that very much, so don't expect much out of me. Um, so what I'm going to be presenting about is, is um, basically something that I've been just tinkering with for the past. Uh, I would say it's been more than than what I said earlier. I think it's probably been more like a month, maybe even two months. Um, I am going to give somewhat of a disclaimer and say that I'm not a Cintia expert. Um, what I do claim to be is a Drupal expert. Um, I'm also really good with PHP. I'm also very good with JavaScript. Um, so because of that, I kind of fell in love with Cintia a touch. I fell in love with just the architecture to a point where I said, you know, this is really powerful and especially whenever you pair this with Drupal, you get a really fantastic product out of that, and it was something that I wanted to share with everyone. So this is presentation is the result of that. Um, so again, I'm not a Cincha expert. I may even say some things that are wrong about Cincha, but that's why I'm giving you that disclaimer. So stop this YouTube video now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to be talking about uh, building a mobile application uh, backed by Drupal and Cincha Touch. Um, so... Before I do get started, I know what a lot of people are probably thinking whenever you're in the middle of this presentation is like, seriously, are we going to go through another mobile technology? There are hundreds of different things to pick from when it comes to mobile technology. There's so many paths that you can take. And I, I assume that all of you are here because you're interested in maybe either implementing some form of mobile technology for your um, Drupal site or you maybe already have some mobile technology that's not really working out for you. Either way, you have a numerous amount of options to pick from, and that's a really hard thing to do, especially in today's world where mobile is a relatively new thing. I mean, keep in mind, mobile has really been in existence now for less than five years. It's something that's still very new, and let's face it, it's a very fractitious um, industry to be in. Uh, because everyone touts that you should do it this way, you should do it that way. Um, you should use this technology, you should use that technology, when really there are technologies that work for certain use cases. So whenever you're actually thinking about mobile development, I think it's actually important for us to first focus on the different paths that you can take in mobile development. Um, given all these different technologies, Cincha Touch, jQuery Mobile, Titanium SDK, um, even native development, all of them kind of fall within these three larger categories of mobile development. And I'm going to start off by talking about those. The first one is obvious. It's native development. These are the SDKs that Apple comes out with that says, hey, you use our a a Apple SDK to build a mobile app. Android has their own SDK. Uh, Windows Phone, they have their own SDK. Every single mobile platform has their own SDK to where you can build mobile apps on their devices. Um, so that's obviously the first one. The second one is this thing called a native hybrid framework. Is, and I don't really know if that's the official term for them, but this is a really good term, which basically says these are frameworks where they say you can build it once and you can compile this single application into the native languages of these mobile phones so that they run as a native app on the mobile phones but you build them in this single framework and I'll, I'll go through some of those. And then the last one is this mobile web application plus Apache Cordova uh, which is what Cinta Touch falls into but also jQuery Mobile falls into that. Um, so I'm going to first talk about these three different paths that you can pick, give you some of the, the pros, the cons of each and why you would pick one over the other. One thing I do want to make sure that I make clear is that I am in no way saying that Cincha Touch is the only way to build a mobile app. I'm just saying Cincha Touch is interesting. Um, I found it very uh, friendly to work with. I enjoyed working in Cincha Touch and I would recommend it for certain things. However, for other things, I would not recommend it. So let's talk about those. So native development. And again, these are the Android SDKs. This is the um, learning objective C to build iPhones uh, app applications. So the pros is obviously the big one is performance. You are going to get the most performance out of building 
a native application, period. Um, and I really don't think anybody can argue with that. You are getting as close to the metal as you possibly can with writing pure Objective-C, which communicates directly to the drivers, and you're going to get the performance. Another thing that you get out of native is you get this small footprint. You get small memory usage, which also makes it faster. You get smaller binaries, so when you actually compile it, it actually takes less, uh, less room on the, on the phone, which also is another reason why things run faster. So you get this performance, small memory footprint, which those two by themselves is a huge benefit. However, there's one major, major con, which is that every, each platform must be developed individually. If you want to deploy for iPhone, you're gonna have to write Objective-C to build an iPhone app. And then, let's say you want to deploy it on Android, you're going to have to write it for Android, a completely separate app that's supposed to somehow behave the same way, but you're going to have to write it again in a different language, different framework for Android. I think you get the point. This is the biggest problem with native development, and which is one reason why I believe um, native development is at some point going to be phased out. There will be probably be replaced by this, which is these native hybrid frameworks. Um, I'm really excited about these. Uh, this, this presentation is not about these, uh, but I am very excited about them, um, which is basically what these do is they allow you to build an application using a standard set of language. So you might use JavaScript, you might use um, Corona, I think uses, oh man, I, I can't even remember the language that it uses, somebody remembers. Lua, yeah, Lua. Um, so they, huh? That's a yeah, so they use like these common languages to build these applications, which is really exciting. It's it you still get this cross platform, so you you're able to build once and compile it for all these other things. You also get performance. Keep in mind what you're actually doing is it's compiling to the native application, so you do get performance out of it. However, there are some constraints. Uh, for all the ones that I've investigated, there are tons out there. So let me know if you guys know of any that don't fall under these cons. But one is, um, from what I've noticed, there's a lot of license constraints. Um, like with Titanium, there's, there's a lot of licensing constraints. Even with Corona, there is. Um, if, you, if you compile it in those frameworks and you deploy it to the App Store, they have like some, you know, some small text that you have to make sure you read really well to make sure that you are able to do what you're able to do. Um, most of them cost money um, <clears throat> if you want to use them. And then uh, the biggest con that I can think of for these uh, is that you really, you still cannot run these as a web application. You can't, uh, even though like Titanium, you're, you're writing this with JavaScript, you can't just put this, plop this on a website and expect it to run because it just cannot be ran as a web application. Um, they're, they are meant to be compiled to the native languages, um, which I actually consider that a con because especially for people who have a Drupal backend and they're trying to build a mobile app, they may want their mobile app to be the mobile representation if people visit their website on their cell phone, um, not even open up the app. They want that native mobile app. And of course, there's a whole responsiveness uh, argument around that as well, but I, I do consider that a con. And then, of course, the third one is this mobile web apps plus Apache Cordova. So these are basically what it is is it wraps this web application in a native web view on the, um, on the, the mobile device. Um, so on iPhone, it just launches an app and it launches web view, but it's a little bit more than that. It exposes some of the drivers for taking a picture. It, it exposes the accelerometer. So all of these things are actually exposed as JavaScript APIs within the web application. So you have access to them. Um, within the actual JavaScript application. And then from there, you can actually, using Apache Cordova, which I am going to go over in this presentation, you can compile that to a, an application. So there's several con, uh, pros. First of all, it does use web technology. So you're using stuff that you already know if you're in web development. It's a big plus. You're going to use JavaScript. You're going to use HTML. You're going to use CSS to build your, your UI. Every stuff that you already should know. Um, Another pro is it's also cross-platform. Um, you can also use this as your mobile website, which is another big plus. Um, and I know a lot of people that do this. They, they build a, um, a, a mobile web app and compile it to uh, Cordova, but then they also, in the 
in their uh, PHP, they have a, a switch that says if this is coming from a mobile device, just load, it, load up the, uh, the mobile application instead. I don't even want to worry about responsive. I just want to have that people have that experience if they're using the mobile device. It's actually a very common practice. Another pro is a common user interface. So in order to get a deployed application to look the same on iPhone and Android, um, it is somewhat painful to do that if you're going to build it natively. However, if you're using one of these frameworks, uh, it's very easy. You just it, it just does it because you're building it like a website. Everyone who uses your app is going to have this common user experience. Um, and also, it's, it's free. Most of them are free, kind of. And the reason why I say kind of is because there are some ways that you can kind of fall into a trap if you, if you use it in a way where it's not meant to be used. Um, like if you want to use it in a kiosk instead of a, a mobile device, that's, a, that's an example of where you would have to pay if you're using Cinch Touch. Um, they call those embedded devices, but they don't consider phones embedded devices. Um, so you can use Cinch Touch on your phone uh, for free. <coughs> Cons, this is the big one, <laughs> performance. We still have some performance issues when you go this route. And it's a very noticeable performance issue versus native. So when you build this, you know, the list views are not going to, you're not going to be able to throw a list view and it just like moves 100 at a time. You are going to have some noticeable performance issues. Um, Cinch of Touch was actually fairly decent, which I'll kind of go over that. Uh, jQuery Mobile has some issues as far as performance is concerned. And then, of course, I want to um, say a con is also a common user interface. You, you'll see this is funny because I said this was a pro. Some people actually consider that a con. They say, you know, I don't want, I want this to feel like an iPhone app or I want this to feel like an Android. So d depending on who you are and what you want, it could be viewed as a con, which kind of leads me to my, my next thing, which is which one do I choose? Do I go the, the mobile, the, the, the web, web version, or do I go the hybrid version, or do I use the native? And, and really, the answer to that is it depends on your requirements. If you want performance, you have to use native. Okay? If, you, if, it, if performance is very important to you and you have an a application that you want to crunch numbers or you, you graphics intensive, if you, want to, if you want to build a game, don't use Cinch of Touch to build a game. You want you don't want to do that. You want to use some. You want to use native. Um, for non web applications, I would say use the native um, the native hybrid framework. So if you're building a an application that doesn't not necessarily uh, using a web as the back end, your best bet may be Titanium or Corona. It may not be Cinch Touch. Um, but however, if you have a web application and you would like to have a mobile representation of that web application on as a native app on your phone, then this may be your best bet. But notice how I say this is, I didn't say this is your best bet. I said this may be your best bet. The point is, it's up to you. You have to just kind of just say, okay, I, I'm gonna, I think this is going to work for my requirements and use that. But Travis, I want you to make up my mind for me. <laughs> yeah, right? It would be much easier if I said, you have to use this. I'm not going to say that because... Go ahead and say it. It's okay. Uh, I, I, I will say that Cinch Touch is a good technology. It's great. Um, I was very impressed with it. But there are some issues um, whenever I was building it. In fact, I have an app that I built, a really simple app that uses Cinch Touch. After the presentation, come up and use it. You might say, oh my gosh, I can't, there's no way I'm going to deploy this thing. Um, but it's also another reason of that is because I'm still fairly new with Cinch Touch. Um, I know there's a lot of build tags and build ways that you can actually build your application to be more performant, and I didn't necessarily do the research that I was supposed to. And before this presentation, a lot of this I kind of threw together in the past couple of days. So, Good question. Yeah. Uh, if you have a desire to have your app be standalone, so download a bunch of articles. Disconnect from the internet, get out of range, and you can still use that. Uh -huh. Does that pretty much throw you into the performance area, or can you actually no. have a you, mini or a, um, a, a light? That's actually that's actually a really good a really good question. He says, "Do I have to have this thing connected to the web? I mean, if, what if I want to use this on an airplane or something? I want to. You can absolutely use this technology. Um, uh, Cinch of Touch and even Cordova." takes advantage of your light, uh, your device's storage settings, just how a native app would, to store you know, any type of data that you want to store on the device. And the great thing about that is it uses web storage mechanisms 
And that's really just an abstraction to the actual device storage, uh, which is just local storage. I call it local storage. So you can set things in local storage as data items, and it will be stored um, on the actual device. So you can... Okay, including having an SQLite interface? Is that supported? Um, SQLite uh, to, uh, to the actual device. Yeah, running on the device. I'm not. Sh uh, I, b I believe yes. I think there are some. There are some APIs where you can get to SQLite through Cordova, but and he's actually confirming that. So well, good. For, for the for the old uh, gap, phone gap. They can all. You can get to SQLite. Yeah. So yes, the answer to your question is yes. So the, so the question is okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I, I'm sorry to make that distinction. Uh, PhoneGap is actually a way to get mobile technologies on your mobile device. So, Cinch Touch, jQuery Mobile, these are mobile technologies. PhoneGap is actually used to compile those into a, and they also expose some native APIs via JavaScript. And so, so what you do is you use PhoneGap with Cinch Touch to get it on your your mobile device. I'm going to go over all that in this this presentation. Did that answer your question? Okay. So why would you actually use Cinch Touch? And, and I feel like this is the slide that you guys want to look at because this is these are some compelling reasons why I think you should use it. Um, first of all, it is an enterprise web application framework. And when I say enterprise, I mean it. It is, it is rock solid from an enterprise perspective. It is object oriented. The code is laid out well. It uses MPC architecture. Everything about this thing is beautiful from an enterprise perspective. So if you have a lot of developers working on a single app and you don't want them stomping on each other's code or you having uh, what I call Wild West code all over the place, Cinch Touch is great for that. It definitely keeps a, a really tight grip on architecture. And I love it for that reason. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over. It also seems more performant than other frameworks, such as jQuery Mobile. Um, it, it does seem a lot more performant. There are some other ones. Uh, JQ Touch is another one. Um, mobile's getting there now. Huh? I said mobile's getting there now. Yeah. Mobile. Yeah, jQuery Mobile is getting there, but I, st I still think Cincha has the edge as far as performance is concerned. Cincha also, you, you, you call up their guys, they come to you, and they teach you how to do it. So it's yeah. like, you know, without nobody, it's got 80 people, you know, goes in and they train them all. Yeah. And it's and very it's, enterprise. That's and, enterprise. Yeah, I, lo I love that about it, though. I mean, they, you, someone's got your back. If you need help, someone has definitely got your back. I mean, you might have to pay for that. That's how they make money, but someone's got your back. MVC architecture, which I love MVC, and I feel like that is a very big proponent of Cinch Touch, which I'm going to go over. It's also object-oriented. Awesome. has a beautiful user interface. You're going to see it. It's just out of the box whenever you build that stuff. Just, it's going to look pretty. If you try to build a native... Um, iPhone app from just the you're gonna it's gonna it, it takes a lot of work to get that thing to look beautiful whereas this is just beautiful out of the box it's also flexible very customizable excellent documentation the documentation I think sells this project which I'll, I'll show you a little bit of the documentation you'll love it it's really great but has a very steep learning curve very steep um, you know I consider myself an expert JavaScript developer an expert developer, and I had to, I had to study the docs to get to get to know this thing. I feel like after this presentation, you guys will have enough information to kind of get started, which I think that's the most important thing. Just get started, and once you get started, you'll start having questions, and then the docs will help you there. And then the last thing is that it, this is JavaScript heavy. In fact, it's all JavaScript. You're not really writing HTML here, which I consider a plus. And the reason why I consider that a plus is because whenever you're trying to be performant, whenever you're trying to use best practices and best patterns to make your application performant, you guys, and even me, I do not know the best tricks of the trade to write the, uh, my HTML in the, in the perfect way to make this thing performant. I noticed when I was using jQuery Mobile, I was having to do a lot of research on how do I structure my DOM to make this thing work right. Cinch has already done that work for you. All you have to do is just know how to build these data, these uh, J JSON data structs, and all of that HTML is built for you in the back end, so you really don't even have to look at it. Um, so at that point, the JavaScript that you're going to have to learn to use is just JSON. It's configuration. So you're just going to have to learn how to configure your objects in a certain way. 
So let's get started. And the easiest way to get started is to go to their docs. There is a page called uh, go to uh, docs since you touch uh, 2.21 guide getting started. That's a great way, um, great documentation there. You're going to download the SDK. You're also going to download a thing called Cincha Command, which is going to let you build the project. Really great tools. Uh, Cincha's got it figured out on how to, excuse me, provide the tools to make your life easy. It comes as a zip file, um, what you download. You extract that. And then inside that folder, you're going to run to build your first app. You're just going to run this simple command. You're just going to type in your terminal, type Cincha, generate app, example, and then wherever you want to put it. And that's it. And this thing will build an app for you. Um, in fact, what it looks like is this. And this is what I love about this presentation framework is this is Reveal.js. And because it builds a, a web app for you, this is actually a live example. So as I give my presentation, I'm going to show you what this thing looks like and we're going to be able to navigate through it and actually use it. But this is what the, um, the default app looks like. It, it actually, what it, what it builds for you, and I don't even show it to you, in, in, in my download, which by the way, I do want to mention this entire presentation if you guys want to look at it. Um, it's on github.com, uh, Travis T, and I think I called it Drew, uh, presentations. If you go to presentations, um, you'll see I created this Drupal Sencha. So you'll be able to click on these examples and look at the examples in GitHub um, as they're built out. Uh, but this, per this particular example is just what's built for you. It's an index file, it's a main file, and actually what it looks like is this. So the code layout <coughs> is something that's real important, and, and I really wanted to illustrate how, how it kind of builds things for you and kind of walk you through this. So this app.json file, that's kind of configurations. I've never really had to edit that. Um, you kind of just leave it alone. Uh, but what you do at it, edit is this app.js file, which is what's used to actually, that's like the main file, the main application file, which we'll get into that here in a little bit. But where I really wanted you guys to focus was inside the app folder, there's a number of directories that's provided to you by default, which is a controller directory, a model directory, profile store, and view. And if you do the default example, it's only going to put a single file in the view called main, which is what you see when you download this thing. There's, it it kind of gives you an example and it basically says, okay, you have a lot to learn to go from this to an actual app. So hopefully I can help you out with that. To get started, we have to focus on the core architecture of Cincha, which is MVC, Model View Controller. Um, for those of you who have been in software development, you already know what this is about, but let me just take a moment to explain what MVC is because it's important for you guys to know this in order to understand why we do things a certain way in Cincha. So the model, that's the M part of MVC. The model is basically your database. Anytime that you have, um, so every, all you guys know Drupal. So let's talk about Drupal and, and talk about it uh, as Drupal would do it. A, the user object would be the model. So the user, the user table. Um, the controller, what the controller does, actually let me talk about the view because it's easier to talk about the view and then go into the controller. So the, the view, which is the V part of MVC, it basically takes care of all the presentation aspects. So if you're going to build a UI, you would build the UI components within the view and only the UI components. So you would have, you know, I want to, I want to show a text field here. I want to show a field set here. I want to put this over here, that over here. You do all of that in the view. The controller is what brings those two together. It's like the glue between the model and the view. The controller is responsible for handling events from the view. So if the user clicks a button, the controller will handle that event, and the controller says, what do I want to do with that event? Do I want to update the model? He may want to fire a new view if the user presses a button and it goes to another page. The controller is responsible for doing all of that. So most of your logic is going to be in the controller in MVC. There's other architectures out there, but in MVC, the controller is pretty much where your app resides. Everything else is just kind of You'll see, it's just there. Um, let's talk a little bit about object-oriented design. With, with Cincha Touch, there's two things that are very important. MVC, object-oriented. Object-oriented design, I'm not gonna go into, this is not gonna be a talk about object-oriented because that would take two days. 
Um, but really what I want to show you is how, how Cincha Touch does it. And a lot of you, a lot of Cincha Touch um, classes look like this. It says ext define example view main, and then you'll see this thing that says extend ext tab panel. This little chunk here is extremely important. And in fact, what I want you guys to think in your heads, anytime you see that extend, replace it with the words is a. So what you're going to see here is define ext view main is a tab panel. So you're basically saying this page is a tab panel in Cincha Touch. And what that basically means is when you're saying I am a tab panel, you are going to get all of the stuff that comes with Cincha's tab panel, which means you can go to the documentation. You can go to the documentation and I can type in tab panel. I love the docs. And it's going to bring up the tab panel and you're going to have all the methods that you can have that you can use. You're going to get documentation on how to use it. There's going to be some sample code. Very good documentation. And you're going to get all of that just from that declaration that says I am a tab panel. And you're going to know where to get started and where to start looking at documentations that are going to help you build that class. Again, great documentation. Go check it out. There's the link to the documentation. Um, one thing I noticed about building Cincha, Cincha Touch apps, you will be glued to the docs. There's, you're not going to get around it. It's, you become familiar with them, get to love them, you, you absolutely need the docs to build an app in Cincha Touch. Um, one thing I do want to illustrate is that there's some really great videos on the docs. Go watch these. I've watched all of them. Um, they're really great. And there's also these guides. So like getting started. Um, you know, hey, I want to learn about components. What's, what's up with layouts? Which we're going to go through layouts because I think layouts are fun. Um, all of this is here in the docs and it's really great. So go check it out. Don't use this presentation as your only source of reference. So let's actually get started. Let's actually dig, get our hands dirty a little bit. Um, that's what I love doing in presentations. So if you're not a coder, forgive me. I'm going to try and walk you through the code a little bit, but you can't do Cincha Touch without writing code. Actually, you can, but I'll go over that a little bit later. But what I love to do is get my hands dirty in the code because that's the way you do apps for free in Cincha Touch. Okay. I've got another question. Yep. Really too much for a loop. Cool. Um, at what point do we bring Drupal and this that's, together? That's next. My, that's, that section is coming up next. Um, so, but, but before, to get your hands dirty, let's talk about, let's just, let's just have some fun with layouts and just kind of get to learn how to build a, just the dummy app with Cincha Touch. Because that's really what you're going to do. The first thing you're going to do is I want to, you know, I want this, my users button to be here. I want my groups button to be here. So in order to do that, we have to first understand layouts. Um, so you'll see here, um, down at the very bottom, take note of that. That's where the, um, the, the code lies. And if you actually go to my GitHub repo, you will be able to follow along with those, those URLs. So this is in a, a view. So I'm building a view. Uh, it's the main JS view. And this is a one that I call, I'm calling example view main. So I, I decide what the, that name is. But I'm saying I am a controller, a container, is a container. If you want to learn about containers, go to the docs. There's plenty of information about it. For everything that you do in Cincha Touch, if you want to do something in a view, you're going to provide some configuration for that. And really, at this point, these are all just JSON objects that are, con you're basically deciding a default configuration for how it should behave. And this JSON object is a configuration that you pass to it. And... What I'm going to tell it is I want this to be a vertical box layout. And a vertical box is basically saying that I want two boxes to stand on top of one another. It's really that easy. And I want all my text within this container to be centered. That's all I'm saying here. So you can actually pass styles, um, custom styles, using the style parameter. And then after that, there's this items parameter. And items basically says, here's what I want to, cont I want to be within my container. You're literally passing, H, like not uh, HTML per, uh, objects, you're passing other objects within that. And so this is kind of a hierarchy thing. So I can create containers and I can pass items inside those containers and I can pass items inside those containers. The point is, is I can provide 
as many items as I want to be within this. So here's the first item. I'm going to go over what this flex means here in a little bit because that's important. I would just want my, my style to have a background color of CC and I want my HTML to say top. And the HTML can literally be HTML contents um, and you just provide whatever HTML you want. And then I'm going to have another one right below it that is going to have a background color of DD and HTML bottom. Here's what you get. This is what it looks like. Very, very simple. Um, so if you actually replace the main JS with this code, this is what you're going to get out of the Essential 2 app. Let's talk about this flex because that's important. Flex basically, the way this works, and you almost have to think of an equation in your head, you add all the items together, the flex of all the items together. So you get one plus one, that becomes the denominator. And this is the, nu the numerator. So you're here saying, I want this to be one half of the H box. I want this to be one half of the H box. What would happen if I had this one as a two and this has a one? So two plus one is three. That means this top one would be two-thirds the height. This bottom ones would be one-third the height. So you really have a lot of flexibility here to make this layout as, uh, however you want to. Let's take this a little bit further and let's build a grid layout. Let's, how would you make a grid? Because a lot of people think about that and they're like, okay, I can do an H box, I can do a V box, but how do I make a grid? Well, if you think about it, a grid is a V box and inside each V box is a horizontal box of two. So you're really, that's how you do it in Sense Touch. So you have, the first one is a V box, and inside that I have two items, the top and the bottom. But inside of that, I have items. So you can, you can pass in hierarchy here. And then I want the left, the right on the top, and the left and the right on the bottom. Does that make sense on how you can actually create hierarchies of of containers to create this kind of grid layout, okay? So you can have a lot of fun with this. And this is a great way to get started with Sensha Touch because you, you can see what you're doing. So I recommend when you get started with Sensha Touch, get started with layouts because it's fun. And from that, you can actually do something even more fun. Now that we know how to build a grid, let's build a home page for our app, okay? Because we're gonna use this home page. So to get started, Here's my, my view. I am going to, my view is a tab panel. You can look up what tab panels are, but we actually did get to see what tab panels are. They're this. So a tab panel has a home, you know, you get these little buttons down at the bottom. So this is going to say home just like this. It's going to be a tab panel. In that tab panel, I'm going to have a title bar. So I need to require it. I want my position for my title bar to be at the bottom. And... Um, I, provide, I tell it what my title is, the icon that I want to show up in that title bottom, which is the home icon. Scrollable equals true. I don't necessarily need this, but this allows you to flick it, and it kind of like bounces the page a little bit. Some people like that. Um, or if there's more content, I could scroll it. But here's this whole grid thing that we just did. There's the V-Box. Here's my title bar. Oh, hang on. Uh, what did I do? Uh, let me refresh that page. Okay, so there's my H box, and then of course, if you really want to look look at all this, it go, you can kind of look at all of it right here. But basically, what I'm doing here is inside of each container, I'm creating more items, which are simply buttons. And these buttons are X type button. That's a way to tell it what type you want it to be. The icon class is user, the text is profile, I want the, the icon to be on top of the, the text, icon align, there's a lot of settings here and I know whenever, whenever you first learn Cinch a Touch, it's like settings overload, it's like drinking water through a fire hose, it's like really, but this is why I said you have to be glued to the docs. But I'm guessing those look really familiar to CSS, um, it looks like almost HTML on the same terminology. Yeah, it, it, they, they do use a lot of HTML stuff. Um, so like you'll see here I, I have padding. And these are actual, these are the same padding coordinates you would find in HTML. Uh, width and height of the buttons. Um, so a lot is the same but still you're going to need the docs right by your side to, to see what it looks like. And what this actually ends up looking like is this. So this is, we're starting to get something cool. You know this is like a little home page that has like a grid. And I mean you don't have to color these backgrounds different if you don't want to. Um, and there's my little home button right down there. 
Um, so we're starting to get something really cool. But now what I want to do, you'll notice these don't actually go somewhere. Let's actually learn how to make separate pages whenever I click on that. So let's do that right now. And to do that, we have to create other views. So anytime you create a new page, what time is it? How much time do I have for this presentation? 7.45, Okay. Okay. I guess I, I'll just go until I'm done. Um, so each of these views, and you guys just tell me if you're getting bored or whatnot, and I'll stop. Yeah, okay, there you go. Yeah. All right. That, yeah, we got beer. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a party, all right? I'll just, I'll be the host. Um, so whenever you create a new page, you, you have to create a new view. So here's the view. It's I call it the user view. This is the user page. Um, it's really simple. The page is... It's going to extend a container. I'm going to give it my own X type. Um, X type is a way for me to name this page to where, so that I can reference it in the con, in the controller. So X type is important, but we'll talk about it a little uh, later. Uh, then I provide my config. So in my container, I want the title to be user. Um, you have to say style HTML content true if I want these H2s to actually show up as H2s. You have to have that that there. But then all I do is I provide my own HTML for that page. And then I have to register that page. This is something that's very important that a lot of people miss is they, they create the file and then they forgot to register it in the app.js file and it doesn't show up and they're like, oh, why, why, is, that, why is that happening? Inside the app.js, there's a views um, array. If there's not a views array, you create one. And I have to just say, I want my user view to be in, included in that. And all it does is it takes that right there and it matches it to that the name of the file. So the, first, the very first line of Main.js, and you'll see, yep, you'll see the mains right there. And so then the second one is user. So and then the app.js just says what all the different views All the different views are. You just have to, it's, it's considered like a registry of all my pages and controllers. And for, for, every one, for every one of these things that I show, I'm going to show you the, the app.js um, changes. So I, I got to ask you, Travis, so you mean by a lot of people, that means you forgot to put the user there in that array? A lot of people. Yeah, you said a lot of people forget to put. Yeah, I did. I mean, there's a lot of times I'll create the file and I'll be like, and I'd reload and say, why is this not picking this up? And then I'm like, oh yes. Probably contains the main first thing. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And then once you start adding stuff, adding pages, you have to add in that app. I'm sure that the Sentient probably lets you create a view using the little Sentient app thing. I think yeah, it probably does. Probably creates that for you, but you know. Maybe. It's more fun to actually know what's going on in the back here. Um, so look, now, okay, now think about this. We, we, have, we have a button, we have a page. Now we have to accept a user press on the, the user's button on the home page, and then we want to show the user's page. Remember what I said, anytime that you have something that handles an event and does something with that, you have to include a controller. So let's, talk, let's, let's build our controller out. So this is located in example five, App controller main.js. I am. I I decide the name of this. So I want to call this example controller main. I could call this anything. You can call it whatever you want. What's important is is I say I is I am a ext app controller. And for those of you who want to see what you get out of that, go to the docs. Very helpful. I is a controller. I is a controller. Yep. <laughs> It, along with everything else in Sentient, takes this config uh, object. And inside, any time that you want to reference a page, so I want to get the main page so that I can add a new page on top of it, I have to say, create this refs object. And I decide the name of this. I just want to call this main page. So. Um, and you'll see, you'll see when I use this. Um, I use this later in a method called get, so get main page. Um, so you say this get main page. And so it, that method is decided by whatever you call this. But the point is you can call this whatever you want it to be. And this is the X type of the page of main.js, of the view. So whenever you create your main page, you'll have that X type there. And that's why you need that X type, is you need it, you need it for this refs. And at that point, I then say, I want to control something. And the thing that I want to control is I want to trigger on a button event. Um, so you say control, you create an object and put all the things that you want to control. And this is just key value pairs. This is CSS selector. So I can say, I want to trigger 
on the button whose user action is user. If I go and show you, this was this is what, example five? I think so. If I go and show you um, the view, the main, I didn't necessarily um, show this, but you'll see that there's an action on this button, and there's a user's action on this button. I decide the name of this. So this isn't like a Cincha thing. This is, I decide what I want to call that action. But the point is, is that action reflect, reflects here. Button, action equals user. So whenever someone hits that user button, I want to call a method called onButton. And that onButton, I declare in the controller, says onButton, it's going to, pa I'm going to pass an event. And here's where I say the refs, this get main page. And you'll notice it camel cases it for me. And you'll notice I didn't camel case it right here. Oh, I mean, it is camel case, but it, it camel cases it for you. So, but the point is, is this relates to this ref. So get main page. So I could actually call this get Travis page, and it, it would say get Travis page. It, those two reflect each other. And then the cool thing about the navigation view in Cincha is it's really a stack. You push pages on top of it, and you can pop pages off of it. The point is, is as you push pages, it, it literally will push pages in the UI, and then as you, as you pop them, it'll, it'll get rid of them. And um, what you get, what is this, the controller? Oh, okay. This is me, uh, this is me adding it to the app.js. You have to have a controllers in the app.js and add your, add your new main there. And this is what you actually get. So whenever I was saying pop pages on, you're saying, okay, what does that actually look like? It looks like that. And it takes care of that back button for you. Um, just by popping a pay, or pushing a page on the navigation view, you get what is already kind of resembling an app, like a, a mobile application. It's really cool, just like working with um, different pages, and those, those pages are really easy to build. Um, you saw the views, they're, they're very simple. In the stack, exactly right. And you can push as many as you want. So you can get as deep as you want by just pushing pages on top of that. So that, you that. Three here, you get a forward button. Uh-huh. Yep. Yep, you would. Um, so very powerful. I mean, that's that's what I love about Cincha is in jQuery mobile, you have to build that back button yourself. You have to literally yeah. create the element that's the back but, back ref. Cincha just does it for you. And, it, and you have to do the animations too, so... yeah. Whenever, like on our app, the animation's always going one direction. Whether you're hitting yeah. back or not, it doesn't do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so so this, it kind of does a lot for you. And, and the more you learn it, the more it becomes really fun to work with. Um, it, it's frustrating at first just because of that steep learning curve. But hopefully this presentation's kind of walking you through, you know, building that UI in a way to where you're not going to be so discouraged to get started. I do want to mention Cincha Architect um, because for those of you who are really, really scared of all this code and you're saying, you know, I just want to build an app. I really don't want to do much other than just building the UI. There's a great tool out there called Cincha Architect where you can literally drag and drop these components, put them where you want it. I want, I want, when I press this, I want the navigation and it builds the code for you. However, you're going to get stuck at some point when you try to hook that up to Drupal. I mean, it's... And my point is, is if you're going to be getting your hands dirty at some point, might as well get your hands dirty from the very beginning when you know what's going on uh, about everything with your app. However, it's there if you need it and if you have a deep pocket. This is how, uh, this is how Cincha makes their money. They, they, they provide tools that make your life easier when building their apps. Um, so they have an architect um, tool out there that will help you. And it is expensive. For some people, I mean, for like a company, that's reasonable. If you're not a startup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Quick question yeah. on your uh, GitHub. It was um, Travis T, T Presentations. If you just go to Presentations, Travis T Presentations, you'll see it. it's it's right there. Oh. Um, Travis T Presentations on GitHub, right. Drupal Cincha, and you'll be able to see all the examples. What a travesty. There. What a travesty. Yeah. yeah, it's a play on words. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, so now that we talked about the app, let's actually let's actually make this thing come to live with Drupal. Um, where this is really this is where it really gets exciting. So let's talk about Drupal as the back end of Cincha. and really all of this revolves around the services module. 
For those of you who have been involved with Drupal, probably already know about the services module. It's uh, basically a standard solution for integrating external applications with Drupal. Go read the docs about it. It's really cool. But let me walk you through just how to get things set up. Okay. First of all, you're going to install it. Download it, install it in your Drupal site. Go to services, services views. You're going to want to install the REST server. And that's at admin modules. So all the links are there. <laughs> Next, you're going to go to admin services, admin structure services. And there you're going to add a new service. And you're going to provide it the settings, API. You want your server to be REST, your path to endpoint API. And also, I would recommend turning on session authentication. And... Oh hell! Why don't you just enable everything? Um, you don't really, you don't really need to. All that you really need to enable is uh, JSON and JSONP. Um, request parsing. Um, you really just need multi-part form data. You know, what? just enable everything. It's, it's not, it's really not going to hurt to just enable all of those in the formats. Um, now you have to go to the endpoints and the resources and make sure that those services are enabled. So you're going to want to enable file, um, node, enable everything. Just check everything. <laughs> I mean, that's the easiest way to say it. I mean, just that way, that way you're not saying, hey, this doesn't work. Just, just enable everything. And this is, this is what I love, I love about jQuery is you can actually do a really quick test with this. Uh, in fact, I'll do it. Um, just open up your uh, developer tools. And for those of you who don't know the quick start command, I think it's, uh, it's uh, view, developer. developer. Yeah. Developer tools. Go to the console, and you can actually because J, because uh, Drupal has jQuery, you can actually use jQuery get here, and say API users JSON, and pass that to a callback function, and then console log that. It's a great way to just test to see if everything's working. Uh, cannot find you. Oh, oh, okay. It's user JSON, not users. There you go. Um, so that's actually a really great way to test your endpoints. And that works for posts, and you can use jQuery post. Uh, but if you set it up right, that should actually come back with something that resembles this in your console, like you just saw. So now that we have services set up on Drupal, let's actually connect Cincha, your Cincha Touch app, to Drupal. Um, and to do this, the example I'm going to build is a user list view. I'm going to create a, view, a list view of users on your site. So the very first thing we're going to want to do is define the model of user. And remember, a model represents a single object. So here all we're really con concerned with is how do we represent a single user in, in Drupal. I mean, if you guys look at the, at the user database, the table, you're going to get the username, email, user ID, created, roles would be one if you, if you, were, if you were, wanted your app to care about that, roles. Um, so to do this... Um, we're going to do this in, I, I'll put the link in after this, I should have put it before, of where this file is located, but it's located in the mo uh, model directory of your app. And you're going to say your is a ext data model. And this is whatever you want it to say. Example model user. The next thing is you're going to provide a config, but in the config it's going to be the fields that define your model, which it's that for a Drupal user. And it, I think this is fairly readable. It's, uh, you have your UID field. It's an integer. Your name field is a string. Your SID, which is your session ID, it's a string. Your uh, email is a string. Um, access is a type date. It's formatted as a Unicode. A Unix. Unix timestamp. Time stamp, that's yeah. what I meant. Um, picture is a string. Actually, I think the RESTful gives you a file ID, which um, I... I built a, an app that I had to deal with that, but I'll, I'll go over that later. But that's it. That is all you have to do for a model. And that's what, that's what makes working with Cincha great, and it's easy, is because that's all you do in the model. And then you kinda, you're kind of breaking things apart so that they're easy to understand piece by piece. And that's where the file is located. And then, of course, don't forget, you have to add that model to your app.js file. So that's called models and you just create an array and you add that model, that user model to your app.js. The next thing we want to do is define a store. So now a store in Cincha represents a list of objects. So think of views here. Okay, the views module. The views module is a list representation of 
objects. Or it can't. I mean, it can it can query a single object. But the point is, is we need to define this endpoint, which was the user the user endpoint, and that becomes a store in Drew in Cincha. So to do that, we're going to say, okay, we're going to say define ext store users. We're going to extend the data store. Uh, it requires this JSON P proxy, which I'm going to tell you what this proxy is because we run into a problem when using it that I had to fix, which was kind of painful, but it ended up being an easy, easy solution in the end. And then, okay, then we say, here's the model that I want your store to use. So because we're, we're using the user's um, query that returns all users, each one of those entries has a single representation, which is the user model. So that's where you provide the model. And the next thing is you have to say, where's my proxy? <coughs> the proxy is used to communicate to the server. So in our case, we have the user's endpoint that returns a list of users. We're going to say that's a JSONP type return. It's a JSON return. Here's the URL to that endpoint. And then I say my reader, the thing that reads this and parses that, it's returned in JSON format. And um, that's where you can actually go to find that example. So if you go to example six, app store user.js in my GitHub repo, you'll see this file. But there's a problem. The problem is, since a touch makes some assumptions um, about the paging parameters, it calls page one the first page, and Drupal calls page zero the page. So we have a problem. We have a problem where since a touch made an assumption that they thought they were making your life easy when really you're going to implement that and you'll be like, okay, this, isn't, this doesn't work. Actually, it does work if I have more than one page, then it only shows me the first page. So what I had to do is I had to create my custom proxy and I derived it from JSONP. And this is actually, I'm actually glad this happened because this helps me illustrate to you the power of object oriented. I have the power and the ability to override anything in the sense of touch infrastructure. The, I can say, okay, this class doesn't really do what I want to do. I'll just override it, create my own class, derive from it, and change whatever method that I don't like, which is exactly what I did. So I said, okay, I'm going to create my own proxy, Drupal. I'm going to extend that JSONP proxy, and I'm going to call it proxy Drupal. And there's this method. If you actually open up JSONP proxy, if you open up that file, you'll see this get params, and it basically provides this return of this page in this limit. However, it doesn't do this, that neg minus one. It doesn't do that. And I said, okay, no, you don't. Let's, let's subtract one from that and problem solved. It took me a while to get to that, but that's what you, I ended up doing. So it doesn't, it doesn't assume, do you get the last page too still with that? Uh, well, actually, if you go to the last page, it, it returns no results. I mean, it's, it's just it's it's an off by one thing. And mm -hmm. Otherwise, everything works. Yeah. Um, so that you can find that in the proxy Drupal, but that's why I had to put that there. And so let's actually fix the user store to do that. And to do that is really simple. I just say type Drupal instead of JSONP. I say my proxy is now Drupal, and then because I added it, oh, I don't think I showed you me adding it to the app.js file. I did have to add that to the app. Actually, no, I didn't because I, I do this requires here. I didn't have to add it to the app.js because I said requires example proxy Drupal, and then from there I say type Drupal and it works. So your app.js is kind of like your auto load, uh, auto load file. Yeah, it's an auto. It's, that's exactly what it is. It's an auto load. If it, you don't have to use it, if you have power to require it when you want to. Um, and then this is the app.js of me adding to the stores. And then, um, so now let's actually create the list view. Um, so what I did here is I actually changed the existing view, users.js. No, I think I created a new one. I created a new one called users.js. And it extends ext list, which is the list view. I'm going to say it requires the store because the list view is basically a view representation of a store. And then I say, here's my store, style HTML context, contents, and this is really cool, this item TPL. This tells me how do I want to render each item in the list. I can provide HTML here. Um, I do have to say that this is a EXTX template in order to be able to do this, which what that does is that relates to the model. So you notice my user model is what's being passed here, 
So for every single one, it's going to say username is going to populate there. User mail is going to populate here. Point is, is these values, whatever's in these handlebars, is coming from the model that we defined. And then I create this on item disclosure that creates the little right arrow button, um, which basically gives you that right arrow button. So now my users, and this is actually pulling from Drupal. This is, this is pulling from that API. Um, it, it gives this button here. Um, if there were a lot, I could be able to drag and drop. There's an empty item here. Does anybody know why there's an empty item here? No, it's not because of that. That's the anonymous user. Oh, it's pulling in. Which I actually, I think that's a bug in the the endpoint. I don't think the endpoint should be returning. Well, the, in the database, that's anonymous. It is it is a user in the database, but I think the the endpoint should exclude the anonymous user. Um, so now let's let's do one other thing, which is to I want to when I click on one of these items, it actually goes to a user view where I can view the user information, which is what we're going to do next. So to do that, I go to at view user, this is a new page, so I need to create a new view for it. I want to extend the container, I'm giving it my own X type. Actually, this page already existed in our previous examples. The only difference here is I created this right here, this TPL. I changed this TPL to an EXT template, and keep in mind, and again, these relate to the store. I'm not store, the model, the user model, name and email. This could be any template. You can actually provide HTML here and, and use CSS to uh, mo model change how it looks. And then I, next thing I need to do is hook up the controller. Whenever you press the button on the list, it has to open up the page. So I have to reference it in the refs. I create an item tap, on item tap, which is the list event for when someone taps it. And I say, I want to call this method called show user. And show user, it gets the main page, which that's where, that's our, our navigation that we're going to plop that page on top of. It's going to push the user page. I want to set the title bar to the user's name. And then there's this data parameter. The data parameter is the model. And if I pass that to the page, all those little handlebars will populate with the model values. So it just so happens that um, the item tap event passes the record that it's pointing to. And so all I have to do is just kind of pass along that record to the page, and then the page will get that model to be able to populate the user view. And so what you end up getting is something that looks like this. I can tap that, and there's my name. Very cool. And you notice it's, it's doing more than stacking more than one page here. Um, so it's very cool. I can. Uh, that's how you do a list view with um, a page on top of that. So there we go. We, we just hooked up uh, Drupal with um, Cinch Touch. Let's talk a little bit about something a little more complex. What if you want to create content? Form handling. I want to be able to post items to my application. The first thing that I want to mention is I did run into some headaches with this. Uh, trying to get this to work cross, cross domain is a headache. You're going to have to figure out how to configure your server to accept what they call this cores, which is cross origin resource sharing. So all I'm going to do, instead of actually going into detail on how this works, is I want everyone to go to this, do, uh, this domain, and this walks you through how to handle this, um, how to set up your server to allow that. Once you get that set up, all of this should work. Um, so to create a form, um, so here you'll see this is example seven. I create a new view. This is called my, my no view. And I'm going to extend from ext-team form panel, which is a way that you create forms. Um, here you see that I'm populating items. The first one is a field set. You, for those of you who know Drupal, will, some of this will start to make sense. I create a field set, and inside the field set, I add some more items. So here I'm adding some items to the text. I'm adding a text field. I'm adding a text area for the title and description. And then down here, I'm adding a submit button. And I make sure that I give it an action, which is node save. And then what I end up with, oh, I, I didn't mention how you actually get to the node form. I actually had to hack a button in here. I mean, you could add this anywhere. So I was, uh, I was like, I'll just put it on the settings page. What you end up getting is this. Um, it, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. You don't have to worry about theming any of this. It just looks like this by default. So there's your title, your description. And if I press save, let's actually do something with that. Let's actually save a node. Um, so to do that, we have to uh, set up the controller. 
So here my refs is referring to the node page. On There's two event handlers that I need to create here. Um, well, the first one is, is just to get to the node form, which I have a button, that button called node form, I want to go to it. But this is the one that matters, which is the button node save. And then when that occurs, I want to call this method on node save. So let's, let's take a look at how this, what this actually looks like. So on node save, I create that self uh, equals this because there's a lot of callbacks in this and I want to maintain that this pointer. This is one way to do it. You can also use closures to do that, but it's more readable if you just use uh, self this. So to get the values of the form whenever they hit submit is as simple as this. So this get node form. And keep in mind that get node form, that is pointing to the refs. That refs thing that I, de I define that says node form equals that x type. And then I just say get values. And that's going to that's gonna pass to me a JSON object of all the values that they populated in that form. And at that point, I create my post params, which for Drupal, it looks like this for a node. It's node bracket type equals whatever type you want to create. So in this case, I'm creating an article. Um, the title is values title. Um, the description is that. And then we use ext ajax request. It's, very, it's similar to JSON post. Uh, but for the most part, it looks like this. The latest version of uh, uh, services, I actually had to add this step here because of services 3.4 came out and now every post requires a token. And that threw me for a loop. But with since it's not that difficult. You just get do a get to get that token. This with credentials, that's what you need with cores, that, that thing at the very beginning, that cross... Um, Cross object relational, whatever, cross origin relationship, whatever it was. You need you need that to for it to work with that. And then it's and then it has a success, and the, the the token is actually the response text. And then from there, now that I have the token, I have to do a post to the node um, endpoint. I have to provide with credentials. Here's what actually changed with three four is now I have to set this header which is this XF CSRF token and provide the value there. But it's easy in, in Sensor Touch. You just provide a header, a header's parameter. Makes it more secure that one. Uh-huh. And then you have a params. Here I'm passing the value of these params up here. And then I, on success, what do I want to do whenever this thing is successful? I want to I want to first decode the response using JSON. And then I'm just going to do a message that says, hey, yeah, your node was successful. But then I don't want to keep showing the form. You know, like otherwise the form would just be there. What most people expect is the form to go away and it go to the last page they were on. And to do that, you just pop the current page off the main navigation controller. And so that'll pop that page off and they'll go back to the page that they were on. Um, so let's see what this actually looks like. So we're going to go new node. And I'm going to save, and it goes node created. And then if I actually go to my Drupal site, you'll see there's my latest. It actually created a new article. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I'll be here all night. Um, so yeah, so that actually created a node on my Drupal server, which is, I mean, that's pretty exciting. I mean, I created that from a, a mobile app. So that's how you do that. Now let me talk about a little project that I'm kind of tinkering with. I'm kind of doing a little something on the side with, which is a little project I'm calling Drupal Touch, um, which is basically a lot of this kind of like pre-built for you. Um, I'm, I'm kind of, what I'm trying to basically do is wrap up all the existing Drupal services and kind of like this sample Cinch Touch app is really the purpose of this. Uh, but if you, guys go, if you guys go to Travis T. Drupal Touch, you'll see this, this app. If you actually walk through it, here's what you get. And actually, let's, let me log out to just kind of show you. So um, it comes with a home view. There's this article. Oh, dang it. Um, so there's this home view. Um, then there's this articles button that shows all the existing nodes. And you'll see there's the, one that, the new one I just created. Um, so you can actually click on each one of these, and it goes to a page view on Cinch of Touch. It's pretty cool. Uh, but here's where it really gets really interesting. I've created uh, authentication, so you can say, "Here's my, here's my login," and I'm logging in. You'll see it. It creates a me page now. So, dang it! <laughs> hang on, hang on. It, it'll be there because it's. I've already logged in. It creates a me page. I can log out. 
Um, so now I can actually even add a new article. So here's where it gets really cool. So I can actually browse and create a new a new one. Let's do the Lorax. So I've got image um, uploads working. Um, and then when I hit save, it actually just created this on my server. Um, and you notice there wasn't really any, um, so there it is. And you notice there really wasn't much, there wasn't much like cycling, waiting for this to happen. And the reason is, is because with Cinch of Touch, because it deals with models, I was just able to pass the model from the form that they provided straight to the list view. And it didn't have to like query the server for it and reload it. It just, it's just loaded. So the UI for that is actually very fast, and the request to actually do it just happens on the back end. Um, so this is something that you guys can just download. It's free. I mean, I'm, I'm not. It's just a open source. Go to Travis T. Um, repositories, Drupal Touch, and download that. And if you just run it and you you hook it up to your server, you might have some problems with the post and the logins working. And the reason why that would not work is because of that cross-origin thing that I just mentioned. Um, but a, a good, easy way to get it to work um, is to create a subdirectory in your existing website. And that is simply the, um, the contents of that repo. And then, then it'll work. If you guys want to play around with it, not have to mess with that whole cross-origin thing. So just create a subdirectory in your Drupal install and download the contents of that there. And it'll, you'll be able to play with it and get it all to work. And, worry about that cross-origin stuff later. So that's the uh, project that I created. Um, so now let's talk uh, just really quickly, hopefully this won't take too much time, on getting this onto your mobile phone. Um, this, this, isn't, this part won't take that long. Um, it really just involves Apache Cordova uh, phone gap. So what Apache Cordova phone, phone gap does is it provides a way to deploy web applications as a native app. Um, so to set up, you're first going to go to download it. So go to cordova.apache.org. You're going to download, download it. And really, instead of instead of me creating slides to regurgitate the getting started guide, I have a link there because it's great. The getting started guide was very well done. Oh, I didn't say. <laughs> I think I just messed up. Let me do this instead. Open new tab. It's really great. I mean, it really walks you through. Okay, how do I install? Okay, I'm gonna. I'm, if you're on a Mac OS or if you're on Windows, I mean, it just really kind of walks you through all the stuff you need to know. So I'm not going to regurgitate that. Just go there, and it's, it's really helpful. You may need. I had to do this. You may need to upgrade your Android tools. Um, I had to do that because I I already had Android tools on my computer, and they were kind of outdated. So I had to I had to update them in order to get the um, that bin this this command to work which is a new uh, it's a new command from Cordova it's great it just like builds a project for you you just change directories and you say create and it like builds this project for you um, then you just basically say I want to set up from existing code um, what I ended up doing um, that I found that was very helpful is um, you already have the Cincha app already on your hard drive so Delete the www directory out of the assets folder and create a sim link on your Mac that points your already your Drupal Touch app to the www folder, and Cordova will be totally happy with that. And that way, if you update your app in one spot, you just go over to your application, hit build, and it'll just build build it for, build it fresh. Um, I did not spend much time on this as much as I would like. Um, but I do believe that you can make your Cincha app production ready using the Cincha command, command line tool. Um, do, do more research than I did. I just spent just a, a short amount of time yesterday researching it. But I think you can say Cincha app build production. That makes it production ready. Uh, it optimizes the code in some way. I don't know how it does it, but it just does it. Um, and so you'll want to run that. And then from there, you'll want to make sure you enable USB debugging on your phone. And then after that, you should be able to hook up your phone to your computer. Um, so just your USB cord. And here's the Cordova Sentia app. You'll notice this assets www folder simply just points to my Sentia app. And if you've hooked up your uh, thing correctly, oh, also uh, you, you want to use Eclipse um, 
I use Aptana just because it's more web developer friendly. Um, I actually I actually recommend Aptana um, because it's it already has a lot of the web developer plugins enabled on it. Um, so Aptana Studio you can use for this, um, and then you'll just click on www or you don't even have to click on that. You just uh, click this button up here, which is the build button. And if this thing is hooked up to your computer, that build will have an option to pick your phone as a deployment. Um, as a, a deployment, and it really is as easy as pressing that green button. And when you do that, it will launch a Cordova app. It will launch the, uh, I think it will, yeah. So it'll launch it on your phone, so you can actually play around with it and, and, and see it, what it's like on your on your mobile device. And that's a native app. Yep. It's a native app, yeah. It is. Th there is a an app button. Cordova, there it is, right there, and it, it's a native app, but it's being ran um, as a web app on my phone. So I mean, it's there's and it's it looks it looks beautiful. There, it's I think I didn't do something wrong with this one. I think I did something wrong with this one to where it's not as responsive as it could be. Um, but I'm still looking into that. So the Android has issues with with um, this with scrolling and stuff. On oh, it does. Yeah. It maybe maybe new ones. One, this is a very old Android phone, so yeah. maybe that's. No, I've been having that trouble with with it here recently too. Okay. Are, are you actually having to do it to your computer right here, so you have to modify going to your work computer so that you can surf the people's site there? Oh no, this is a <laughs> no. This, this right here is is dummy data. Um, so instead instead of linking to a store here, I just provided just data. Just I I um I faked it here. This is a fake. This is a fake. Don't believe it. Uh, no, it really does work though. I've I've tried it one you know with the local and actually connecting to a server and it does work. But the problem is I'm doing everything on local host and um, you just have to get around that cross origin policy thing. The local host should actually go through my computer at that well, point. Well, I mean, the only way you can be able to do it on your phone is to have your phone go through the Wi-Fi. Oh, yeah, yeah, and then it would be an IP address. Yeah, right, yes, right. that would work. If you get to your IP of your address of your computer and this is connected to the same Wi-Fi, that does work. I've actually done that before. Um, so, yeah, have fun, guys. Um, it is a lot of fun, um, and that's pretty much it. That's Mobile Drupal with uh, Cincha Touch. Hopefully that had all the content that you guys hoped it would. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you.